We'll move on to the Bowling Green Falcons. And Scott Leffler, the coach there, uh, it, it had the team looking fairly decent last year. Had that big upset win over Minnesota. I, you know, I don't know exactly what to make of it because when you look at the postgame win expectancy, eh, you know, it, it's tough to beat a team like Minnesota when you only have 192 yards of total offense in a game. But alas, they found a way to get it done. Um, went 4-8 and eight last year, went 2-6 and six in the conference. Their projected SP Plus record for this season is 5-7. and seven. They are number one in returning production in the country. 92% of their guys come back. Uh, 95% of their offensive production comes back. That is number one in the country. And their defense, 88%. Of their production comes back. That's number four in the country. Um, but having a bunch of returning, you know, experience doesn't necessarily matter if the guys are not good. How much can you reasonably expect them to uh, to improve just because they've had a bunch of reps, right? I think the team is going to still be okay. Uh, but let's let's look at what they lost. They lost uh, the safety side, Dabney. Um and he transferred out, uh, the right tackle, Jordan Murphy, and then the cornerback, Devin Taylor. Like, those are the big losses for him. But, I mean, they got a ton of guys back as far as their their top players. Uh, linebacker, Darren Anders, tight end, Christian Sims, the quarterback, Matt McDonald. I don't know, you know, how great, but he's going to be a key part of that offense. Wide receiver, Austin Osborne, the defensive end, Brooks, the safety, Anderson. Uh, and then they got a Memphis transfer, the center, Jakari Robinson, and then a linebacker, DJ Taylor from Wake Forest, is coming in. So... They should have the dudes. I don't know that the roster strength is is great, but Bowling Green is in a much better position now than they have been at any point in Leffler's uh, era, right? In in all the years that he's been coaching sure. here, I think this is the best spot. Let's let's talk uh, about the offense. Um, Ten starters back on the offense, but will they improve? The team was number one twenty three in PPA per drive. They only averaged four point nine yards per play. Uh, the quarterback Matt McDonald he threw six touchdowns, zero picks in the last four game, uh, last four games last year. Going two and two in the process, they need a running back to emerge. What can Scott Leffler do on offense to help this team improve this year? Uh, or do you have man, an idea? I, I, well, I've, I don't. So I don't have them being very good. But once again, this is one of the situations where another year in the system and this guy. You've talked about this before, not being the guy there. Went out, I think, out of desperation and grabbed all the transfers he could grab, hoping that that would be the difference maker for him. Um, and, and man, I don't know that that's the answer because this is not like getting a bunch of P5 transfers going down to play with your school so they get starting time. You're taking other guys that aren't making it at T5 level and bringing them in. Um, I still got them two and ten. I think they're gonna, you know, struggle to win football games. Uh, I, I don't know that you can build chemistry by just bringing in a bunch of guys that have never played together at all and hoping that it works. I, I might be wrong, but I've also been really down on this team for a long time. Well, I've, so they've got ten starters back on the defense. Uh, they struggled against the run. They they played. Great. I was going to say, but how 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 good are those guys? We have this conversation exactly. Yeah. Here. Yeah, Bring, bringing a bunch of dudes back that sucked last year ain't, ain't really yeah. the, 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 <laughs> the equation to being good this year. They, I wouldn't imagine that all ten will actually be starting this go round, which which could be interesting. Uh, but regardless, you got guys with experience and whatnot. They played great against the pass. Uh, they got eighteen turnovers from opponents, so that was certainly helpful. They got playmakers at every level of the defense. That includes four defensive linemen with three hundred sixty plus snaps each. Some stud linebackers and defensive backs, etc. Uh, the keys to the season I've got here: keep the defense healthy, don't turn the ball over, clean up the penalties. They were number one fourteen in the country in penalties per game last year. Uh, you have got to find a way to improve this offense. Last year, I don't know if you remember this game. Leffler got ejected against Buffalo last year, and the offense average after he left better. the game. Uh, the offense averaged ten point five two yards per play. That was double. Are almost so, double more yeah. than every other game on the schedule. Yep. So, <laughs> what can they take from that one game where Leffler was not in? What can they do to open this thing up and make it, you know, a little bit better? Uh, 
their offense BPA per drive last year was 123. I mean, it, it, it's almost dead last. Their rushing success rate was number 119. Passing success rate was number 114. Uh, they were able to create some explosive plays, but my God, when you were that bad on everything else, uh, people almost don't expect you to do anything. So they were number 72 in that. Uh, this team, I think with the experience that's coming back, with some of the, the transfers that are coming in, I think they can be okay in some spots. This is another team that's got uh, a fairly difficult non-conference schedule. They play at UCLA, Eastern Kentucky, Marshall at home, and at Mississippi State. Uh, but the conference schedule sets up you know, decent. I think they can win the game against Eastern Kentucky and then win three MAC games this year. Uh, just based on the schedule, I, I look for them to go probably four and eight. I, I think they're going to be about the same as they were last year, and they could be more competitive in some of these other games. The question for me is going to be, after you lose all of this experience next year, how how bad of a drop-off will you get in 2023? Like, that's going to be crazy to me. So you've got them at two and ten. I've got them at four and eight. We shall see. We shall see. So you got this them the team. same as last year. Yeah, I've got them the same as last year. Um, which is which is crazy. Like they were pretty good last year. Probably should have been better than four and eight, but also maybe probably. should have only been two and ten last year. Like that's the yeah. I was about, about to them. say, you know, that Buffalo game should they have, should they have won that game? And Buffalo was bad last year. Like yeah, well, let's just say it. Like they they weren't good either. And they really probably should they have won, beaten. They only, they, they only won two conference games last year. Yeah, and they probably should not have beaten Minnesota, right? I mean, yeah. they beat oh, them fourteen no, no, to ten. No. Like that was a weird. That's right. Ah, uh, so weird. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.